This graph is a graph of the plutonium-239 isotope undergoing radioactive decay. You can see how the intensity of radiation changes with time. This is how um, we can take a look at the kinetics of a particular radioisotope. That is, how fast does the decay occur? And what you can see is, in the case of all radioactive isotopes, they undergo what's called first order kinetics, or the rate law is a first order rate law. And what that means is the rate of change, the rate of change of the isotope, in this case is plutonium 239, with time is going to be equal to some constant k times the initial amount of the plutonium isotope. Okay, and so what that means is the change is dependent on the amount of the plutonium um, that is present. And so it's called the first order rate law. And because of this, we can report that uh, at a certain time, 50% of the initial sample will be gone. 50% will have undergone decay. Okay, and at that point when half of the original sample is gone, when half of the ripple, so if this is the initial time and this is uh, uh, on the graph you can see you're down to 50 percent and you go over and go down, you can see in this particular case it's 24,100 years. Then if you have your starting concentration right here, or your starting amount, and then go um, halfway down again, that gets you to 25 percent, and then the time here is 48,220. So each time um, event, when the sample is cut in half, that particular amount of time is identified as the half-life of the radioactive um, isotope. So the half-life is equal to the amount of time, amount of time it takes for half of the original sample to decay. Okay. All right, so that's just defined as the half-life, and this is true for all radioisotopes because they all obey first-order kinetics. And you can see that the half-life um, varies for different radioisotopes. Uranium-238 is 4.5 billion years. Whereas polonium 214 is 0.00016 seconds. So the half life varies widely, and the half life of a radioisotope is an indication of the stability of the isotope. The more stable, the longer the half life, the longer it takes for the t decay to occur. Here's an example problem hydrogen. 3, also called tritium, is sometimes formed in the primary coolant water of a nuclear reactor. Tritium is a beta emitter with a half-life of 12.3 years. For a given sample containing tritium, after how many years will only about 12% of the radioactivity remain? Well, in this case, it, you assume you start with 100%, and after one half-life, um, a time span of one half-life, you will have reduced your original sample to 50%. Then after another half life, that sample will be reduced by 50%. So half of half of uh, 50 is 25, and so then after the another half life occurs, we'll be down to about 12%. So that's one, two, three. The passage of three half lives. If one half life is 12.3 years, three times that is let's see, 36.9 about. 37 years.